Thank you guys so much for coming back to another park report. And thank you for all the love on the last video and your feedback. This is going to be my last voiceover because I heard you guys want to see more in the moment shots and that sounds like a lot of fun. And personally, I want to work on my speaking skills for these voiceovers. So I'm going to try as hard as I can to speak entirely from the diaphragm. All right, so today we're going to check out Cedarville State Forest and some history behind it. Cedarville State Forest is a protected area in the state of Maryland close to Brandywine, Maryland, Cedarville, and Waldorf. The Piscataway Indians camped here in the wintertime because of the mild climate and the abundance of wildlife to be hunted. There's a legend that these parts are home to an Indian burial ground, but to date, it hasn't been found. The headwaters of Zekia Swamp are located here at the Cedarville State Park. Much of Southern Maryland is a swamp, and this swamp continues through most of Charles County. Starting in Cedarville, it trends downward for about 20 miles and empties into the Wacomico River. Zekia Swamp is a mile wide here, and it's a haven for a lot of wildlife, and it's marked as an important bird area for Audubon. The phrase, drain the swamp, is now more popular with Donald Trump's plan to fix the federal government. But back in colonial times, many attempts were made to drain this swamp for cultivation. And many of the drainage ditches are still evident today. In the 1930s, Maryland Department of Natural Resources for Park and Wildlife Services purchased a total of 3,510 acres of what is now known as Cedarville State Park. Then in 1933, our National Park Savior, FDR, directed the Civilian Conservation Corps to develop roads and trails for fire protection and future access for the development of this area. From 1933 to 1935, some 160 men, mostly African American, of the Civilian Conservation Corps started working on Cedarville, reforesting thousands of acres, building park roads, creating dams, bridges, and restored historic sites. They lived in five barracks across the current Cedarville buildings that housed 50 men each. Now remember, this is during the Great Depression, but those men were only paid $30 per month. And every time I come here, I always find this section creepy, but Cedarville operated three charcoal kilns in the 1950s that produced over 3,600 pounds of charcoal each week. The charcoal was used in Cedarville and many other state parks throughout Maryland to produce heat. This is a shot of the remaining kiln here, used as a demonstration of how they used to produce wood charcoal. Very cool, but very eerie. So getting here from Washington, D.C., it's a 28 mile trek down south through the southern tip of Prince George's County. That can be an hour or an hour and a half depending on the time of day. If you're coming from Northern Virginia, or southern northern Virginia. It's a little shorter of a trip, but whether you're coming up or down, you'll be taking Route 5 or 301 to get here. So what's there to do while you're here? So the hiking here is extensive, but it's relatively flat. I would definitely say it's a beginner's trail. Walking the blue, orange, brown, green, and white trails, it's a combined 19 miles of a bunch of trees and wildlife. Here's a screenshot of the official trail map. I'll also put a downloadable PDF in the description below. I will warn you, because this is a swamp, it can get extremely wet and muddy. And if you're coming in the summertime, the mosquitoes can be unbearable. Spray some bug spray or DEET and they should leave you alone. There are over 50 different species of trees, including white and loblolly pine plantations. You'll see these and an abundance of other wildlife, like hawks, owls, beavers, and deer. Walking the trail not your thing? How about fishing? On Cedarville's four acre pond, you can bank fish stocked bluegill, catfish, sunfish, and bass. Just make sure you stop by a local Walmart and pick up a Maryland's non-title sports fishing license before you come. You can also hunt on the designated 1100 acre hunting area during Maryland's hunting season. I'll link the current schedule and regulations in the description as well. Cedarville State Forest also has two archery ranges and the one located on the Blue Trail is a Pro-Am Field and Hunter Certified Hunter Competition Court. But my favorite thing to do at Cedarville is camp. There are 26 campsites and one bathhouse for family private camping. Each campsite has a pad, a picnic table, a fire ring, and some even have electricity. All the campsites in the park is pet friendly, but please keep your pooch on a leash. There is a single bathhouse located centrally in the loop and the showers are warm and clean. Perfect after a long, hot, and humid day of hiking. If you have a large group or a youth group, there's a separate loop for you and your posse. Check out the other link for more information. Campsites are available April through October and can be reserved online or registered that same day. Prices range from about $19.50 
for our non-electric campsites to $25 for electric hookups. If you just want to explore the trails or have a nice meal outdoors, they have that here too. Drive in and get a day pass on the honor system and have lunch on one of the many picnic tables and grills located on Cedar Forest Road. Also, if you place a reservation, you can have your next event here too, under the pavilion with multiple picnic tables and grills. These trails are also equestrian and mountain bike friendly. So you can bring your horse and your mountain bike. And there were a ton when I was here. I just didn't get any footage. I think that just about wraps up Cedarville State Forest. This park is one of the closest to my home. So I find myself going here often. And even though it's so close, I still get that feeling that I'm far away. As a personal review of this park, I really like it. It's inexpensive, it's close, has beautiful scenery, a bunch of wildlife. The only cons I have are the inescapable humidity and bugs that you get with camping in Southern Maryland. Uh, but that's kind of par for the course here. I really hope this helps you make your decision on whether you're going to stay here soon. My next part coming up is Martinac, and I look forward to talking to you guys again. See ya!